You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're going to hit a good one and most of your playing partners are going to struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are going to share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm really excited. I've got an awesome video for you today. We're going to talk about how you can get out on the course, step over top of one of those iron shots and be completely confident that you're going to hit the ball solid. You're not going to chunk. You're not going to thin the ball. You're not going to hit it way to the right, way to the left. You're going to make that really crisp, clean contact. We're going to go over three of the most important things to do that. And it all starts with covering the ball. So let's jump right into it. Let's talk about how you can cover that golf ball and really compress it. Now let's dive right into it. How do we cover the golf ball? And first, let me talk about what the wrong way to do this is, which would be a flip or a scoop. And I think a lot of times people misinterpret. They think that you try to flip or scoop to get the ball up in the air. So if I'm flipping this golf ball or my hands are flipping, a lot of times what I've found is this is an effort for power. So we're going to talk about how to be powerful without flipping that. But if I flip one here, you're going to see how my hands are leaning back and it makes it really difficult to hit the ball solid. So there, I tried to hit it solid, but I scooped it a little bit. I picked it clean off the ground, kind of thinned it. I came up a good 20 yards short of the green and it really just didn't have that compression that I really want on there. It feels more powerful because I'm pushing my wrist at the golf ball or I'm pushing my wrist which would be this way toward the target. That feels like that should speed up the club head, but that's actually not the right way to speed up the club head. If we cover the golf ball, we can get that club head to accelerate under its own power to really whip through contact and make golf a lot easier. So the first move, let's go over that again here. If I'm flipping, I'm taking my right palm, my right hand, and I'm pushing it toward the target. If you look at the, the muscles on the inside of your forearm, those are flexing to get you to push your hand forward toward the target. A lot of times also when that hand pushes forward, I run out of room here and my arms will start to chicken wing or my left elbow will bend as I come into the follow through. That's from that pushing type motion. Now, again, like I said, that seems powerful. I'm using a lot more muscular force here, but I'm not creating the acceleration that I want in the club head. Now, if we cover the golf ball, and all that means is you can kind of think of the loft on this club face at address as being up into the sky. What you're gonna feel like is you're turning this loft down and you're gonna cover that loft on top of the golf ball. So if I'm looking at this from address, I'm feeling like, this is the sensation I have in my mind, is that I'm covering and I'm taking this golf club and covering it on top of the golf ball like that. That's a sensation. Again, it's not exactly what's happening, but that's a feeling. You'll also feel like your right hand, your right palm, instead of flipping, it's gonna feel like the right palm of your hand covers on top of that golf ball also. So I'm really getting my body, my hand. You'll notice that my posture is on top of that golf ball. I'm not standing up out of the shot like this. Everything is covering on top of that. So it's the club face covering it, it's the right palm covering it, and it's the fact that I'm still in my posture covering on top of the golf ball, which is where that term covering the golf ball, compressing the golf ball, really, you know, uh, uh, almost like de-lofting the club comes from. So why, how could that create a lot of speed? It doesn't seem like that's gonna be very powerful. It seems like it should be more powerful to really flip that club on through there. This actually happens because when you're in this covering type position, you're actually still releasing the club. The club is on the way to releasing, but it's the fact that you still have this forward shaft lean that allows you to whip that club on through. So if I can imagine here, let me take a club that has forward shaft lean on it and let me pull the butt into this grip up. Watch what happens to the club head. It really accelerates on through there. A very small amount of force on the butt end of this club can get that club to whip on through. The only way I can do that though is to have some lag in forward shaft lean as I'm starting down. So here, as I'm starting my downswing, there's a couple things I want you to feel. Number one, I want you to feel like your right wrist is bent back, really, really bent back. Number two, and this is very important, I want you to feel like you're swinging inside out or out to the right. I almost feel like when you're swinging this club, if I'm facing the camera here, I'm swinging the club this way, about 45 degrees out to the right. As I open my body, that's gonna allow that club to square up. All right, so that's the first two pieces, wrist back, swinging out to the right. And then number three, I still wanna be releasing this golf club, but I wanna release it in front of this golf ball. So if I put a golf ball kind of down my target line here, say four or five feet in front, I'm imagining that I'm going from this covered position to releasing that golf ball and now I've gotten rid of all these wrist angles up here. 
that allows me to get this compression on the golf ball at contact and still release it to get the speed. Now, let's put those pieces together. On the first couple reps, I want you to do five or six of these while you're practicing. Focus only on the right wrist. The right wrist is staying back, and I'm gonna feel like I keep my body rotating all the way through to a good full finish to accelerate all the way around. So here, I'm really gonna feel like my right wrist is back. That club is covering on top of it, and I'm gonna accelerate to a good full finish position. Let's see if we can hit a nice one here. There we go, that one's right at the flag. Just probably 10 feet right of the flag, hit that one nice and solid. So there, again, the right wrist is back. I'm still getting speed because my, I'm naturally gonna release out in front. The second five or 10 reps I want you to do here, we're gonna focus in on that inside out motion that we mentioned. So if we start to come over the top and feel like we have this big lag angle, I'm gonna start chopping down into it. To be nice and shallow and thin and hit that ball cleanly off the ground, I need to have the sensation that I'm swinging this way, out to the right. It's only when my body opens up, and you can see as my hips start to open, that's gonna square that up to where I'm swinging toward the target. A lot of players keep their hips square, and they hit at it with their hands and arms, with their wrist. That's not what we wanna do. We wanna have the momentum of the body, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, carry it through there. So the sensation is I'm swinging out to the right, and since my body's opening up, that actually squares me up going toward the target. So this second five or so reps, to get a little more comfortable with it, right wrist back, you're swinging to the right and you're gonna let your opening body square everything up. So let's go ahead and try that out. There we go, another good one. Just barely left of the flag on that one. I actually hit that one too good, that's gonna be a little long. Yeah, just about 10 or 15 feet past the flag. Now, from there, let's go to the last piece here this releasing out in front, which is the last key to covering the golf ball. Now, if I'm covering this golf ball, again, the misconception a lot of players have is they're gonna get this wrist angle here, I'm gonna be down, and then I'm just gonna hold all that off. If I do that, I lose tons of speed. I need to release this golf club toward that golf ball out in front. So I'm gonna have these same ideas, these same sensations. Wrist back, swinging out to the right, but when I go ahead and swing through, I'm gonna go ahead and let that all release. Everything's going out in front of this golf ball. I'm gonna let all that energy from the club release toward the target. And that's also what keeps it really square as you're coming through. That nice square face gliding through the golf ball, going out toward the target, that's gonna make things a lot easier. If I feel like I'm holding off on it, it's gonna open, I'm gonna block it to the right. A lot of bad stuff's gonna happen. So I have to go ahead and let that club head go as I'm making this swing. Let's give that one a whirl. There you go, another one nice on the green, just a little right of the flag. So those are really gonna help you to what's called cover or compress the golf ball, those three areas there. That's just the first piece. I got some really, more, another few great tips that are gonna help you to build on this and get your game even more consistent. Okay, so that's a covering of the golf ball. That's really gonna help to get those wrist angles really good. Now let's talk about how we can get a lot of that, you know, feeling like you're pushing again, that flipping, that scooping, like the arms are doing all the work. How do we get away from that and get the momentum coming from the body? And there's actually a pretty common mistake that brings us to our second key, which is if we're gonna be a really good iron player, we have to let the body build the momentum and then the arm just add a little speed to it. So to get that momentum from the, bottom, from the body, the body has to continue to rotate through the shot. Now, earlier in this video, I mentioned that if we wanna cover this golf ball, it's the forward shaft lean from the club, which is actually gonna be releasing past the golf ball. That's completely fine, that's what we want. It's this right wrist at impact being kind of angled back, feeling like your palm is covering the golf ball, and then that's releasing after impact. And then third, I mentioned that your upper body or your posture, you have to be kind of down where your upper body's feeling like it's on top of this golf ball, which is gonna help you to feel that sensation of covering that. Now, what most players do, what they get wrong, is that when they're hitting this iron shot, they tend to let their hips come forward, their upper body comes up and back, and now all of a sudden, if I was to have this covered motion to really have the forward shaft lean, I couldn't reach the golf ball. All right, if I was covered, I'd be here, but if I stand up out of my posture, all of a sudden I can't reach the golf ball. So what do I do to solve this problem? I start to flip and scoop, like we talked about we don't wanna do earlier, and that creates all that bad contact. So if we wanna get the momentum from the body, there's two things that have to happen here. We have to get it in a position to where I can be down and covered and stay in my posture, 
but then still have everything moving on through. That's where the big key comes in. A lot of players that try to cover the golf ball, what they'll do is they'll stay down in their posture, but then they just stay down in there forever, right? So it ends up being all arms, it doesn't work, and it feels terrible. What we actually wanna have happen here is, as I start my downswing, if you imagine my belt buckle, there's a laser shooting out of that. As I start my downswing, I want that to be going down toward the golf ball. So my hips are kinda of down toward the golf ball, my chest is down toward the golf ball. But then as I finish my swing, now all that comes up. My belt buckle is facing up toward the target. My chest is nice and high. If I had a laser shooting out of my shirt buttons, it would be nice and high here. And I'm coming all the way along around. My chin's even nice and high. That allows me to complete the swing. And that's when I actually have extension. So early extension, as a lot of people call it, or what would be the opposite of covering the golf ball, is when my upper body extends early. It extends in the downswing as I'm coming into the golf ball. The proper extension or later extension would be I'm coming down, covering the golf ball, and then I extend up as I come through the fall through. The cool thing about this, it ties in with exactly what we talked about when we took this butt in the club and we let it whip through the ball. If I get a bunch of this lag and now I'm down in my posture, as I extend up, I'm taking this grip and I'm pulling it up that allows the club to whip on through with a ton of momentum. Now I could use the momentum of my body. Now I can use my hips and the big muscles of my body to carry that club through there. So let's try this out. Do another five or 10 reps for me. As you start your downswing, feel like everything, until your left arm is about halfway in the downswing, feel like everything's getting closer to the ground. My belt buckle's down, my chest is down, everything's down. I feel like I'm really gonna be close to this ball covering on top of it. And then as you finish, so we're gonna pause in that position a few times. So go back to your setup, pause and fill that position. And then as I finish, I'm letting everything whip on through. Now my belt buckle's up, my chest is up, my chin is up, and I'm coming to that good full finish position. Five or 10 of those, just pausing in each piece. Pause here, and then pause in the good full finish. You're gonna to start to build that muscle memory. And what you're gonna feel, the sensation I get, is almost like my body is doing a lot of the momentum and the club is just swinging along. My club and arms are just swinging with the momentum of our body. Like we talked about early, those hands swinging out to the right. As my body momentum opens up, that squares the face. That gets this club really working with us rather than against us. So let's try that out again. Watch as I first start my downswing, my chest feels like it's getting closer to the ground, then I'm coming to that good full finish. Let's give it a whirl, see if I can cover this one and really let that club release out in front of this golf ball. All right, nice and solid, definitely covered it. You can see I stayed in my posture. All right, so we covered piece number one. We gotta cover the ball. We gotta really compress it. Piece number two, we gotta create momentum from the body by using those hips and really coming through to that good full finish. And piece number three, we have to make sure that we're shallow and we don't chop down into this golf ball. If we start to come start a downswing and our butt into the club, imagine there's a laser pointing out of this. It's pointing inside the golf ball. Now all of a sudden I'm gonna chop down into this or again, if I feel myself starting to come down really steeply, what's the natural thing? I bet you're a really good athlete and you do this without even having to think about it. You start down a little steep and then to shallow that out, you let the hips come forward, you let the body back out, and then all of a sudden you flip a little bit to keep yourself from slamming this club down into the, into the golf, into the ground. What we have to do now is to shallow that club out. So if I was making a swing here and I paused again, kind of in the first half of my downswing, I want the butt end of that club to be pointing either, if we're looking from down the line, either at the golf ball or a little outside the golf ball, so that now, again, as I extend on through, that club's coming nicely down the plane line and I can whip on through there, get that club to release in front without having to shallow it out. If I start down steep again, if I try to cover it, bam, I'm slamming down into the ground. So what you're naturally gonna do, if you start down steep, you're gonna stand up and you're gonna flip. So all these things tie into each other. Now you remember in the first part of this video, I talked about how you wanna have this sensation that you're swinging out to the right. This is really gonna pair up with what I'm about to talk about here. I wanna feel like that club is shallowed out there and it feels like I'm swinging out to the right. So if I pause myself halfway down and I didn't open my body at all, my body was square, I wanna feel like I'm in a position where I could swing this way. All right, that club would be really shallow here. I'm coming away from the inside. The only thing that squares that up is now, 
as my body rotates on through, that brings that club coming through and allows it to whip on through. So if you imagine, if I get this club way to the inside and I open up my body, look how that really whips the club on through. So I'm just opening my body and the momentum of the club wants it to whip through from shallow, shallow position. What I don't want to do here, if I was steep and I opened up my body, watch what's going to happen. That club's going to want to really get stuck under, really chop down. It's almost going to want to hit me. I'm working against the momentum of the club. If I'm shallow, I can open up and work with the momentum of the club. So here, I want you to make a couple practice swings, pause halfway down, and really feel like to you, before you're opening your hips, you're setting up to swing to this golf bag over here. I'm just gonna swing way to the right like that. If I was to hit a golf ball doing that, without opening my body, it would look something like this. Way over there, I think I probably hit that one in the water, almost 30, 45 degrees right. <clears throat> That's because I didn't let the momentum of my body open everything up. I'm gonna make that same swing now, but I'm gonna go ahead and open up my hips and that's gonna sling everything toward the target. That's a real big key there. Look at all the tour players. Look at their body at contact. You're not gonna see anybody in this position on the PGA Tour. You'll see a lot of guys that are opening the hips at contact, really finishing that swing coming back to the left. So the third key here is you're gonna feel like halfway down, the butt end of your club is pointing way out to the right and you're gonna feel like that club is nice and shallow, then you let your body open up to square back up the face. Let's give that a whirl. There we go, I might hit that one the best of any of them. All right, so let's recap on these really good keys. Number one, we wanna cover the ball. That happens from my right wrist, my club face, and my body all being on top of the golf ball. The big key there is that I can't hold this angle forever. I have to release that club after contact. I don't wanna be flipping into here. I wanna be feeling like that club swinging to the right and my right hand is covering on top of that golf ball. Number two, we have to use the momentum of the body. If I stop my momentum and I keep everything feeling like it's down toward the ground, I never come up out of that, I'm gonna to have to use all hands and arms. You're naturally not gonna do that. What you're gonna do is early extend and start to flip doing that. We don't wanna do that. We have to make sure that we get that nice squat. Everything is staying covered over top of the golf ball, but then as we come to the finish, we're really letting the belt buckle, the chest, the chin, everything come up. And again, that's gonna whip this club on through. Let the club do the work for you. Then number three, we can't be steep. If I start down and feel like my club shaft is steep like this, as I open up, that's gonna get me in a terrible position. I need to feel like I'm shallowing out, swinging way out to the right, and then let my opening body carry the club toward the target. If we do those three pieces, we're gonna put them all together, we're gonna hit those nice, crisp, clean golf shots, and you're gonna feel really, really confident when you're sitting over top of your iron shots. Hey guys, welcome back. Now we all wanna hit those solid irons. We all really wanna compress that golf ball. And think in your mind, that player that you know, they may not be very big, they may not be very strong, but when they hit a golf ball, it sounds heavy on the face. It has a loud boom to it. Even though the swing doesn't look very hard, that ball takes off, it penetrates through the air. They're one of the longest hitters in your group, even though they may not have quite as much club head speed as some other players. Well, that's what we all wanna be. We all wanna be that guy that has that heavy hit, that really solid strike, and it feels like every single one of them is really, really solid. What is it that happens for the opposite players. A lot of times what I see are players that are losing forward shaft lean. They're kind of flipping the club through contact here. And instead of having that heavy, powerful hit, the ball just kind of floats up in the air. Maybe we lose that shot to the right. It starts to leak off to the right and it goes into the rough. Maybe it even slices a little bit when we really hit one bad. And it really just feels weak. You swing hard. The harder you swing, the weaker it goes, the shorter it goes. So that's the first problem. When pros are hitting the golf ball, when players that have that heavy hit are hitting the golf ball, what they're doing is they're taking loft off this club. So my hands are in front of the golf club, in front of the head at impact, the shaft is leaning forward, and they're taking loft off of the natural loft of this golf club. So if I'm swinging you know, an eight iron here, pros are taking about 30% of the loft off the club. Every club is a little bit different, but a, an eight iron probably has, you know, let's call it 37 degrees of loft, something like that on it. They're taking that all the way down. Pros are taking that all the way down to 26, 25 degrees aloft when they're actually hitting the ball by getting that shaft leaning forward. 
when you do that and it takes that loft off there, it's like hitting a golf ball with a hammer. You're taking that loft off and it's transferring all that weight into the golf ball. Now, if I took the opposite approach to that, imagine I'm hitting a flop shot and the face is wide open, I could swing 200 miles an hour. I could swing as hard as I want to, but that ball is just gonna glance across. That's why sometimes you feel like you're swinging really hard, the ball's not going anywhere. So that's the first piece. Number one, we gotta de-loft that club. And I'm gonna show you guys a great trick to make that happen to get that heavier hit. Then number two, we gotta hit that club face when it's closing down. So a lot of times players will have that face opening up a bit Again, that weaker shot that kind of flies to the right, maybe even that slice that floats up in the air, that's opening the face. And what happens there when I open this face, even if I have forward shaft lane, if I open that face, I'm adding loft to it. So I need to take off loft by having forward shaft lane, and I need to take off even more loft by hitting a little bit of a draw for most players. Now, pros can hit a fade or a draw. That's getting really, really precise with this. But for most players, I say, let's go ahead and hit that nice, low, powerful draw. If you overdo it, maybe you get a couple hooks in there, but you're gonna be hitting it longer. You're gonna be hitting a lot of great quality shots. So if we can deal off the club and get it to draw, we're gonna be way better off than most of the players that we're gonna be playing. So now let's talk about a little trick that we can get to actually make this happen. It's all great in theory. We say, okay, I understand the heavy hit. I understand how pros are doing that, but I can't do it myself. All right, let's have a cheat where we can make this happen. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and set up to this golf ball with our feet kind of kind of together, only about five or six inches, four inches or so, a club head width apart directly in front of this golf ball. So I'm gonna imagine I'm gonna hit it this way. Now what I want you to do from there is I want you to take your left foot and I want you to open it about 45 degrees so it looks like this. Then I want you to pick up your right foot and I want you to match that to your left foot. Okay, so now both of my toes are even with each other. They're facing about 45 degrees in front. If you look at that ball position, it's kind of on my right heel. I may be a little bit too far forward there. Maybe just toward the back center of my stance will be perfect as far as this. Now, the reason I'm using this crazy forward stance is because now that's gonna force me to get some forward shaft lean, force me to get in front of this golf ball, and it's really gonna help me to compress that golf ball and hit it low. I want you to about four or five shots and just try to get that ball to fly as low as you can. You don't want to go more than say 30 or 40 yards while you're doing this, but I'm really going to try to deal off that club, really get that worm burner. So that's exactly what that one did. It kind of took off, probably went closer to 100, 120 yards, even though I barely swung just because it had a lot of pop to it. It really transferred a lot of energy to it. So the next thing I'm going to do after I've done a few of those and I get used to hitting it low, that's the de-lofting part that we talked about. Now we gotta make sure that we're gonna hit that draw. Now again, is every player have to hit a draw? No, I like to play a fade. There's a lot of pros that play a fade. I'm not saying that the draw is the only way to go, but I'm saying for those of you who aren't getting as heavy a hit as you'd like, hitting that draw is gonna transfer a lot more energy into it. It's gonna get you hitting it farther, and you're really gonna have a lot more fun playing this game if we can do that. So this time, what I want you to do, still have that forward shaft lane, but really feel like you turn those hands down. If I had my left wrist, I'm gonna turn my logo of my glove to the ground, and I'm gonna feel like my hand releases by doing this, keeping that logo of the glove to the ground. So if I was exaggerating that with a golf club, it would be this motion. I'm letting that club de-loft and rotate around. Now I'm really exaggerating here. This would be taking that club face and bring it to outside of the club. That would be a big time snap hook if I really did this. Just a little bit goes a long way, but I'll know I'm doing it right if I hit that really low shot and that ball starts to curve from right to left. I'd love to see you guys just go ahead and overdo this at first. I'd rather see a guy play a 20 yard hook and really compress the heck out of it at first. We can always tone down, do a little bit less and straighten that shot out. But until we've really felt that heavy hit, it's a hard thing to describe until you've experienced it yourself. So really, really exaggerate on this. So this one, I'm really gonna hit that low draw. That ball really started to cut, or it really started to draw even over Drew, but it still got some pretty good distance for a little half shot. Now these are just drills to help you get the sensation of that heavy hit. It's basically just a giant you know, chip shot, punch shot that we're hitting here. As you get more comfortable with that, now let's try to keep that feeling of a heavy hit, but let's gradually get our stance more back to normal. So if this is the drill that we just did, feet facing in front, really got a lot of forward shaft lane, hooking that ball. I want you to gradually start to get your stance closer to, to, to normal, so start to get your toes pointing a little bit more back toward this golf ball and try to recreate that same heavy hit that you had when you're really exaggerating. it. There we go. So that one's nice draw, really low. Those are almost getting to the green from 150 yards with a little punch eight iron. 
that's just how much energy is getting transferred in this ball. So then once I get comfortable with that, I'm gonna go from here and I'm gonna go a little bit more toward a normal stance. I'm gonna hit a few more, see if I can get that nice, heavy, low penetrating ball flight. And then I'm gonna go back to my normal stance and I'm gonna try to recreate the same feel. It should be normal than your, or lower than your normal ball flight. It should turn over a little bit more right to left probably than your normal ball flight. But again, we can always tone that down a little bit. I just want you to get, get you guys really over compressing the golf ball here at first. So after I've done these drills, I'm gradually gonna go back to my normal stance, making sure that I try to get that forward shaft lean with each one, really compress the golf ball. You guys are gonna hit some great shots. All right, we'd all love to hammer those irons, really compress those, hit those nice shots out of the fairway, and hit the ball first every single time. It makes the game a lot more fun and a lot easier when we're putting on the green rather than constantly having to get up and down. And I got some really good tricks to help you to really feel that compression of the golf ball, to really get that shaft leaning forward. I wanna walk you through a, a couple tricks that I've learned over the years that make it much more simple to get the shaft leaning forward and really compressing that golf ball, to get your body in the correct positions. And I'm gonna just step by step walk you through on exactly what to do. And then we're gonna do an awesome drill that helps you to make that ball first contact with the divot in front of the golf ball so you can really compress it. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's jump right into this. What I don't want you to do is just to watch this video think the idea sounds pretty cool, and then go to the course and try it out right on the golf course. Jump up right now, grab a golf club, anything you have laying around your house, you have, if you're at work right now, wherever you're at, grab a golf club, follow right along with me. Now, if you're out at the driving range or at the course, perfect. This is a perfect place to do it. You can do the first half of this video though, right from the comfort of your living room. So let's talk about where the compression of this golf ball comes from and how to really feel like it's that shot where it's just kind of smashed where the ball just sinks into the club face, feels like it's trapped against the club face for four or five or six inches as your club face releases, and it just shoots off there, you know, 15, 20 yards longer than what seems like normal. How do you get that feeling? Now, that comes from a couple of places. Number one, it comes from making sure that you have good swing speed. I really wanna make sure that I finish my backswing and I always come to a good full finish on my follow through. That way I can really keep the acceleration coming through that ball. The second piece comes from, let's go ahead and compress that golf ball by de-lofting the club. Now on the PGA Tour, the pros, the best players in the world have realized it's the easiest way to hit a golf ball. They're taking about 30% of the natural loft of the club off the face at contact. What that means is, if I have, let's say a six iron has 31 degrees. This is a five iron. This has probably got around 27, 28 degrees, somewhere around there, 26, depending on the model. They're all a little bit different. If I have, let's keep the math easy though. Let's say this club has 30 degrees of loft on it. When I come into contact, I'm taking 10 degrees of loft off that club face. And the way you're gonna do this is have the hands leading in front and then also feeling like the toe of the club is kind of closing down. If I'm playing a big you know, cut, if I'm kind of opening the face up, flipping it, and that ball's kind of floating off to the right, there's no way to really compress it like the pros are doing. So I have to have the hands leading forward and I have to hit a pretty straight square shot. I can't be having that ball fade significantly to the right. We're gonna go over that, exactly what to do in this video for that. But the easy cheat for this is take your iron, put the toe of the club right against the golf ball like this at a dress, and then take your normal grip. Now what you'll notice is, because the shaft is now set up way behind the golf ball, as you just take your normal grip and set up to this golf ball, look how it's got your hands leaning slightly in front here at a dress. Now as you come forward into the swing, what I want you to feel like you're doing is let your hips open up and let your shoulders open up a little bit and let your left arm stay nice and tight to your chest. You may even notice the right heel, your right foot starts to come off the ground a little bit. Now, if my body's in this position, almost like I was gonna open up and toss a golf ball toward the target, I wouldn't toss a golf ball this way. I would open up and toss it toward the target that way. That's in a great body position to let my hands lead the way and to take that loft off the club just like the pros are doing. Now, not only are they doing that for long irons, they're doing that for shorter irons too. I have a five iron here today. We have you know, almost a 200 yard shot. You can do that with a pitching wedge. You can do that with a sand wedge. On full swing sand wedge shots where the, the loft is about you know, 56 degrees on a sand wedge, they're taking a lot of loft off that thing. They're taking it down and having you know, high 30s, low 40s degrees of loft at contact. So all the way through the bag, 
taking about 30% of the natural loft of the, of the club off at contact. Now, the second reason that that's gonna help is that when my hands lead the way, I'm much more consistent. If I feel like my hands are in front of the golf ball, the club head is gonna trail back behind and it's gonna be very easy to contact that ground in a much more consistent manner, which we're gonna to get to later on in this video. But that's in a nutshell why we need to be doing this. Let's go ahead and jump into it now. I want you to take five practice swings and we're gonna do these without the golf ball. Five practice swings and I wanna focus on the hips being open. So again, I'm putting the toe of my club forward to what would feel like, uh, you know, I'm gonna hit it with the toe. Or I can imagine this is a, where the term of the title came from, this is a hammer. And I'm gonna hammer a nail straight into the back of my golf ball like this. So I'm gonna make five practice swings feeling like my hips get open at contact and my body leads the way. So go ahead and do five and really feel like you brush the, the carpet or the turf, the ground, whenever you're doing this on your practice swings. So I'm really letting my body lead the way. Again, my left arm is nice and tight against my chest, really connected there. And my hands are in front of the golf ball as I come into contact. So if you look at this slow motion drill here, the slow motion video, you can really see those hands leading the way as you're coming into contact. And you're just gonna feel like, what I love about this drill is if you imagine the tip of this club being the, the hammer, it's very powerful feeling driving that nail down and through the golf ball. So do about five reps, 10 reps, however many it takes you to get comfortable with that, focusing on the hips. Now, as we go a little bit more advanced with this, let's work on the tip of the club or the toe of the club and think about what that should be feeling like. Again, if this is a hammer, if I lean this club forward, so let's imagine we're looking at it from this way. If I lean that club forward, you see how the, the toe of the club is kind of down into the ground. So if this is a hammer and I was driving that nail, I would want that nail to kind of be angled this way, kind of down through the golf ball. A lot of times what I'll see players do when they flip an ad loft, which makes it really difficult to compress the golf ball, they're kind of flipping here and they're kind of coming level through the ground or almost hitting up into the golf ball. I want to visualize in my mind's eye that nail is going down into the golf ball, driving through the turf deep down into the ground. That way, as I'm coming through here, I really feel like I'm compressing or smushing the ball down into the ground. Even though that's not what's happening, the loft of my club is getting the ball up in the air. I want to feel like I'm trapping this golf ball between the club face and the turf and I'm really pinching it, almost like the ball's made out of rubber, and I'm just kind of smushing it down into the ground to really compress it. Again, not what's really happening, but that's a sensation or the feeling that you're gonna have. So five more reps, getting that same type of feeling, really compressing the golf ball. Hands are leaning forward. Turn that toe in, drive that hammer down into, or that nail down into the ground. Now, last piece here, and where I see a lot of players get this idea, and they say, yeah, I thought, thought about getting that forward shaft lean before. I thought about really trying to compress the golf ball, but the problem is when I do that, the ball shoots way off to the right. So whenever I make this swing and I feel like my hands get forward, now all of a sudden the face is way open like that. You see how my club face is way up there. Well, the reason is as I get my hands forward, that's automatically gonna open up this face. And most likely if you're flipping the club, that's to square up the face. If I get my hands forward, now what I have to do is roll my hands to square that face back up. So it's just like this. If I put my hands forward, face turns wide open. Now without changing anything, I'm gonna leave the shaft exactly where it is, my hands exactly where they are. I'm gonna rotate my hands this way to square up that club face there. Same thing if I have the tip of the hammer here. If I go ahead and just lean my hands forward, now all of a sudden that hammer's going way out there somewhere. I have to roll my hands so the tip of that club is facing squarely to the target and I'm driving that nail toward the target down into the ground. So that's the last key there. I want you to do five reps where you do this for me. Toe of the club toward what would be the golf ball. I come kind of halfway down in my swing and then I'm gonna rotate that toe down to the ground, roll my wrist to square it up, and then I'm gonna come back to impact and see if that's square. Then I'm gonna come back to address and I'm gonna swing one. Again, hammering that nail. That's gonna help me to drive that ball inside out, hit a nice draw when I really compress this, rather than just kind of opening it up and having it fade out to the right. So let's go ahead and hit one now. And if you're out on the range, you would hit a few shots with this. You're doing five practice swings, five practice swings, five practice swings to get the feeling on all three of the areas we talked about. And then we're gonna hit five shots. So let's go ahead and try that out, see if we can hit a nice compressed little draw here.
There we go, and that was perfectly hit. That's dead straight, just a few feet right of the flag. And I actually flew over the green there, hit a little bit too solid. After the club down a little bit, but that's a good problem to have. If I can hit it too solid and carry the green from 190, hey, that's a good problem to have. All right, so I took a look at my flight scope. I saw that I carried that one 205, a little bit uh, more solid than I was expecting. I'm about 195 yards from the from the flag, so I'm going to club down to a six here. And again, you know, you start compressing those balls, those golf shots, you'll easily pick up a club more distance. Now, in the first half of these drills, what we just covered there, getting the body open, getting the hands leading the way, squaring up the face. All those were an effort to really compress the golf ball and to get the characteristics of how my club is coming through contact to be correct. Now from here, I want to control where is my low point. The real key now to make sure that I'm hitting it crisp every single time is I have to come down, I have to contact this golf ball first, and then I got to hit the ground second. Now, if you're not used to hitting the ground or you're used to flipping a little bit, this can be a little bit scary because if you start to try to hit the ground, sometimes you may hit a few chunks and automatically say, I don't want to do that anymore. Let me go back to flipping what I know how to do and start hitting it fairly consistent. Well, this is a great drill. It's going to help you to eliminate those chunks, still compress the golf ball like we talked about, and it just makes it a lot easier to do. So the first drill here is going to be a tee drill. Now this one you want to do outside and you want to do it on some fairly short grass. Now I'm going to set this tee up somewhere between a quarter inch and a half inch off the ground. So I'm just going to tee it up like I would a golf ball, take the golf ball off. And now you can see this, this, this uh, tee is barely sticking out of the turf. Now my goal here is to still come down and clip this tee. And I wanna brush a little bit of turf after this tee, but I don't wanna hit it down into the ground so hard that I see some dirt fly up. I'm just looking at brushing the turf. So now I've given myself this small margin for error to make sure that I'm hitting it in the right, the right spot. Now what you'll be surprised on, most players don't have a consistency problem. I've said this time and time again when I have players come in for, me, for, for in person lessons. They don't have an, a, a consistency problem. They have uh, the wrong idea or the wrong habit when they're doing this. So I'll see a player come in that's not playing very well. They'll hit ball after ball after ball, thin, 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 thin. They'll hit it thin every single shot for weeks at a time. And it's not a consistency problem. It's just too thin. They're not getting down to the turf enough. So I want you to go ahead and try to work on this, which is going to be finding that little sweet spot between hitting too heavy and hitting too thin. And this is a great way to do this. So let's go ahead and do 10 reps, where again, I want you to feel like that same idea, that hammering that tee down into the ground. We're just not going to hammer it quite as hard this time so that we're just brushing the turf. Same idea, just not quite to the extreme. So 10 reps. There we go. And that time was perfect. I clipped that tee. I saw a little bit of grass pop up but I didn't really have a lot of dirt or a big divot. Let me go ahead and repeat that again. And again, I got that tee really sitting just about a quarter inch off the ground. I'm gonna try to do the same thing. Hands leading. There we go, and I clipped that one right off the turf. The tee just took off, but I didn't take a big divot there. Now the next piece I like to use, the next tool, is this Dr. Scholl's Odorex foot spray powder. This is the one that comes in the yellow can. Make sure it says Odorex on there. The reason I use this one is because it has a real white film. And when you spray it on the ground, you can see it really, really easily. So let me go ahead and draw a line on the ground, on the turf here. I'm gonna try to get it lined up fairly well with the target. Maybe a little bit off there, but close enough. And I think you'll be able to see that really easily on the ground. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing that I did there, but now we're gonna hit a little bit more of a divot. We've gotten control of the height of our divot. So now we need to just make sure that every time we come down, we hit this golf ball, the divot is in front. So we're gonna go ahead and hit a little bit more of a divot now that we're used to being consistent with the turf and kind of coming in level with the ground. Let's go ahead and go back to that feeling again of hammering the golf ball. And now we're gonna do it just like the pros do. We're gonna take a little bit more turf, we're gonna swing a little bit harder, and we're gonna try to make sure every single divot is in front of this white line. So let's go ahead and try it out. Now again, same keys I did with my full swings from the beginning. Hips opening and leading the way. Hands in front, and I'm squaring up that club face to make sure that I hit that nice draw. Not sure if I can get my six iron there, but we'll, we'll give it a whirl. All right, so hit it a little bit high on the face. 
Oh, just barely short. So not quite as good as my last one, but I did pretty well there where I took that divot in front. Let's try one more, exact same thing again. I'd like for you to repeat this five or 10 times. So again, getting that compression on the golf ball, making sure my divot is in front, and I should be able to go all the way down this line and one after another, never see any dirt or any divot behind that white line. A little bit more solid on that one. Not sure if I'm gonna have quite enough stick to get all the way back there. May have to stick with that five. Yep, that's on the front center of the green there. And again, came down, hit that golf ball, divot was in front. Let's try one now where I take away the tee altogether. And this is gonna be the hardest or most advanced way of doing this drill. So the easiest way to get started, clip the tee, get a little bit more advanced, draw the line, have the divot in front. Most advanced would be no tee, ball right on the turf. We're still gonna to try to have that divot in front of this line every single time. There we go, and hit that one pretty good. See if I can get it all the way back there. All right, that one almost got to the flag that time, and we'll see, again, my divot is in front of the turf. Now, one thing you may notice is I'm not worried about when I'm hitting these divots. If this divot is barely in front of this white line, or if I'm coming in and it's three or four inches in front of this right white line, if I'm coming in fairly shallow, that's completely fine. Your divot doesn't have to start right where this line is. It's gonna be really tough to get that consistent. You can, if you want to, make it start at the same spot every time, that's fine but I just want it to be on this side. That's all I'm really worried about. Some of my most flush golf shots, because I'm coming in fairly shallow here with the turf, I may not really start to get down to the dirt until a couple inches in front of this line. Those are my best shots. So I don't wanna necessarily be focused just on getting that right here on the line. I don't think that's gonna give you the best results. Follow those drills. You're gonna be compressing your irons and hitting them just like a hammer. Now let's make this even easier. Let's talk about how we can release through the golf ball. Let the club, or let the ball just get in the way, let the club release past the golf ball, and you're gonna get even more consistent with the drills we worked on today. That's what I call the straight line release from the Top Speed Golf System, and I got an awesome bonus video that's gonna play for you here in a second. Just go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen or the link down below in the description, and you'll get instant access to that video. You'll start releasing in front, making things a lot easier. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, a common misconception I see is that we wanna create lag, and we just wanna hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact, and that's simply not true. In the release section, we're gonna talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're gonna fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms, so that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson, releasing the club 45 past, and the reason we're gonna see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're gonna to see tons.